forum uh, to let you guys know that this one's going to be a little different than the others. Uh, it's apparently a pre-recorded, but he did tell me to let you know that he will be live in the chat with you guys. Uh, it's just sort of a different format than what he's normally used to. Uh, it's recorded on Zoom, but it does sound really good. I was able to check it out a little bit. And if I can and if I may, I would very much like to give a shout out to Robert Willing and the Chat Vikings for being there for me and being extra supportive and letting me hang out with you guys and playing my games and not thinking I'm such a menace. But that's enough about that. Here's the program. I hope you enjoy. Hey guys, welcome to a, the third impromptu episode of A Talking <laughs> Dead Guy uh, with uh, the third time guest, Freddie Morris. Uh, hey. I think I think we have our audio situations worked out. Yeah, Fantastic. it sounds good to me. Uh, it sounds great to me too. Uh, and uh, you know more chopping. Now I get to hear you uh, tell us your wonderful, <laughs> wonderful informations. Uh, so let's, let's skip past... Um, We've introduced you twice now, so let's get past that point, and I want to get right to what we were doing in the first place. Um, as far as when you were explaining earlier about the uh, the music equipment, I remember that when that was very interesting to me. So uh, I'll start with the first question again. Uh, what is it that got you here in the first place? What got you to the podcast and getting into this in the first place? Well, uh, it started out. I used to run a little recording studio. I had a two car garage behind my house. And I live in this itty bitty little house, but I had this uh, second building behind me. We gutted it because I was in a band at the time. We built a recording studio for ourselves at first. And then I started recording demos for bands here in Cincinnati. Um, this was about 18 years ago, I think, maybe 19 years ago. And um, I got stiffed a bunch. If you ever run a business like a recording studio, people will stiff you if you're a nice guy. <laughs> it's something I learned. You don't never let anybody leave with their masters without paying because they will disappear on you. Um, but I did get to the point where I was doing that, you know, almost full time, but also working full time. And I just hit burnout point and I decided I was going to sell everything off. But um, I decided to keep a couple of pieces of gear because my wife, Amy, was this huge fan of a podcast back then, 2006, called um, Keith and the Girl, who are still going strong today they were a yes. couple of like uh they did like clown performances at kids birthday parties and stuff but they started this podcast where they'd have like new york comedians uh on all the time and interview them and we really enjoyed that and we're like that just seems like a lot of fun and this is back when they were one of the few entertainment podcasts like most podcasts at that time back in 06 were like business tips and like these things that are like how to better manage a network. It was mostly tech people doing them because it was incredibly difficult to create a podcast in an RSS feed and get it out to people. Um, the only place you could get them back then was if you knew how to program an aggregator uh, for RSS feeds or you went through iTunes. Um, and this is like something that was way beyond my technical capability, but we figured it out. And uh, it started as a hobby. We thought, you know, would be something fun for our friends to listen to. And we're like, well, what will you talk about? And we were hardcore movie fans, especially horror and sci-fi movies. So we started about horror movies, created a couple of segments. We've experimented with different segments until eventually, before we knew it, at one point we were the most popular entertainment podcast for a very brief time. Uh, and then in a blink of an eye, that was completely <laughs> destroyed when people like, Doug Benson came on the scene and did Doug Loves uh, Movies and stuff. Yeah. Like these people who had these huge followings came in and started doing podcasting. And we, at the, the last time, podcast it was on the left. Yeah. Last it's podcast these, on the left. Yeah. yeah. And they started out as a horror movie podcast and became a true crime podcast and, yeah. and have found huge success through that. Um, Marcus from Last Podcast actually was a, a really big help to me when we started doing, we did live shows for a while. And now that I think that's like their bread and butter, they tour 
and everything. Mm -hmm. But he was a, a great resource for like how to put together a live show because that was something we hadn't done before I talked to him. And um, it's just wild to see like how it's evolved. And now like there are tons of horror movie podcasts now. There's, at the time we did it, there was us and Pickled Embryo was the other one. Uh, and, then, oh, wow. and then there was one called The Infested Sound that came along later. It was two guys that worked at Arby's. <laughs> and they just talked about horror movies and they were just a couple of dudes selling roast beef. It was hilarious. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, I, re I cool. remember hearing about, I remember finding the podcast and I remember early on, you know, being able to listen to a few. My brother was really into podcasts. So he got me kind of into that. I was, when I found out about them, like you said, they were mainly tech podcasts and I don't, yeah. I don't listen to that stuff, you know, I, but I remember, and I remember he turned me on to you guys. I caught a couple of them with him. And I had no idea it was you. That was the funny thing. I had no idea it was actually you guys until I did some digging. I went to the site and I was like, wait a minute. I went to school with all of these guys. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. um, so I got to admit, you know, I've, I actually signed up for your Patreon. I hate to say this publicly, but I signed up for your Patreon and I, uh, Patreon screws me. For some reason, it will not. I guess my bank account blocked Patreon and I can't ever set up payments ever again. Like it will never. So I have to oh, block Patreon. Trust me. And all I can do is, is catch up on the ones that you guys post that are older, you know, to let just people that follow you listen to, which is completely yeah. understandable. And I've been meaning to catch up. And I know the way you guys run it is you don't have to listen to them in episodic. Each has their own theme. Each has their own. And you can just yeah. listen to the newest one, then go back. Um, I'm glad How you mentioned, you guys... uh, no, I'm sorry. I was just going to say, I'm glad you mentioned Patreon. I just wanted to say patreon.com slash NOTLP. That's how we pay for everything that we do because, uh, the, the expense of doing the show at this point with all of the hosting costs and the travel costs mm -hmm. and everything, if it weren't for that group. Now we never wanted to run ads. We experimented with running ads for a while where we were running ads for small businesses all over the world that were like, it was weird because like, it's a weird strategy. They were just people who liked the show that wanted to support us. So they'd buy an ad, but we were doing like an ad for like a pool supply place that was in California. You know it what seems, I mean? Like, it's, it's it doesn't weird. really, it's branding, you know, like this came <laughs> as, as, as creators got bigger and bigger and then create networks, it ends up like in a branding where you've got offers from sponsors, but it's literally left field sponsors where you got to stop yeah. in the middle of the podcast and be like, Hey, uh, on Colerain Avenue, there's a, pool <laughs> it just, it's, yeah, it's, uh, it's theme breaking and you're like, ah, but we yeah. need the money. So yeah, we needed the money and, but luckily Patreon, even before Patreon, we started receiving donations from listeners to keep the show going, which was something that blew us all away. We were like, people care enough to, I mean, and some of these were pretty sizable donations that helped replace gear, paid hosting costs and everything. But Patreon has been huge. So what we do, we re release everything to notlp.com and all the RSS feed information is there, but you can get it anywhere. You get a podcast. You can find Night of the Living podcast, but, um, we did that for so long, just kind of, we just about run out of money and then we'd be like, okay, let's do another fundraiser. We'd make t-shirts, we'd sell them ourselves at conventions and stuff and get enough money until that ran out again. And then Patreon came along and we were skeptical about Patreon at first. So it took us a long time to sign up for it. But when it got to the point where you could create extra content and it would be hosted and distributed through Patreon and, and goods, like people get actual merchandise uh with kelly combrink's designs he's a great artist um yeah, who also does the show with us yeah it's just been a a godsend like uh it's kept us going being affiliated uh with horror hound magazine has been huge to keep us going uh and i do their podcast horror hound radio and uh those conventions we do twice at least twice a year sometimes there's three but um, and that's been access to all kinds of people in the industry but no it's it's but thanks for mentioning the patreon like i said that that uh, we do other shows there, like Topicana, which is more of like a free form discussion, you know, and yeah. uh, and other stuff. Like I'm doing a limited series with a friend, um, Jason Cretton, who's also a writer for Horror Hound Magazine and works on the podcast there. We're doing a limited series called Freddy versus Jason, where we just talk about uh, the Friday the 13th and Nightmare on Elm Street movies uh, and kind of do like head to head stuff with them. It's fun. That's but, yeah, great. You, I I went ahead and pulled up the page so uh, some of the, the guests can get at least a gander at it. And, and as far as your Patreon, uh, there will be a link in the description. 
Uh, you guys check that out after you check out the podcast. Uh, I'm sure your guys' bank accounts work fine with that. Something got screwed up with mine. I'll find a way to support you guys. I really will. Uh, oh, this I've been is huge. To, Just doing this is great. Uh, it's it's to me it's nothing. Um, again, I was trying to explain to people that when the first podcast kind of went, um, that I wanted to instead focus on really good creators, really good artists, really good musicians, uh, people that. I just wanted to focus on that. It's not about me. I, I want you guys to come on here and be able to to show your content, show your art, show what you do, and, and, and kind of bring it to more people's light. That's that's my only goal here. So I'll kind of keep this open for a little bit and let people get a good look at it. Yeah, and it looks like we've got the latest episode right here. Yeah, you oh, can wow, play it right great. in the browser if you want. And that you'll notice that great. this last series of podcasts we do every January, we do something as a palate cleanser where we let each – member of the podcast there are four of us each one selects a movie and it doesn't have to be horror sci-fi or fantasy so that's why you're seeing films in that list like top secret and oh, um yeah, the and encino Pale man yeah yeah, yeah 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 okay so see, you'll all these see, are gonna be great yeah all these episodes are usually our regular episodes basically one what we used to call straight to video russian roulette and that was that segment was created when the landscape of um, <laughs> of of straight to video movies was all low budget B movies, and now it's stuff like The Pale Blue Eye, which is a Netflix movie with Christian Bale. So we yep. randomly select one of the contributors to review the straight to video movie for the week, and then we spend the second half of the show discussing like a classic or a horror film, uh, current horror film, you know, just whatever the theme is. We try to do themes every three podcasts. We we change the theme. That's that's great and i i'm telling you i've gone back there it is there's freddy versus it. i've gone back and and listened to quite a few of your guys' old ones trying to catch up which you know that's almost impossible i'd be a year behind no matter how often i listen <laughs> you guys you guys do weekly so you know it's kind of hard to keep up with that um but i remember cracking up and hearing you guys and after especially after i figured out who you guys were it just made it so personal for me and i was just like man these guys have changed so much yet not and I, I remember, uh, I think Kelly was in one of my uh, study halls. And I remember, uh, you remember the theater? Of course you remember the theater. You were in yeah. drama. Um, I, I just wanted to sit on this right here because this is outstanding. This is a great rating, my guy. Like, I'm literally blown away. As soon as I saw it, I was like, let's hover here while I talk for a second. Um, <laughs> and as a matter of fact, I'd love to actually read some of these. Um, I oh, remember us funny. Pass, some of the bad ones passing drawings back and forth and oh, yeah. how, how really good he was. And we would, you know, like just draw disgusting gore and just sort of just like check this out. It was a lot of fun. <laughs> and and to find out you guys had all come together and done this, it was mind blowing for me. And I've been wanting to show you guys a lot more support um over the years because it's been quite a few years since i've known about this i'm just really bad with keeping up with stuff like this and i get busy doing my own thing and, and lose it uh oh, it's the same as, here yeah as far as you guys that are watching right now um and, and just a heads up this is pre-recorded so i'm not you know i can't access chat or anything right now um you guys definitely click this link and give some of these a listen and uh the patreon will be in the link so you guys definitely check that out um i guess the next question would be is what decided you, what, what made you guys decide to bring on two more hosts with you guys like oh in the beginning we were worried that if it were just me and amy we would not have enough to talk about so we reached out to i mean at one point there were six people involved and that was too much you know what i mean like that was i, I think we hit the magic number with the original four that we did the first show with and the, the concept originally was we were going to only talk about horror remakes. And we started off with Night of the Living Dead because Tom Savini had made a remake of George Romero's movie in the 90s. And we wanted to compare and contrast the original movie that Romero made with, um, with Savini's remake and have like, a, it was more scholarly the first time. It got more rowdy as the years went on. And now it's kind of, in between those now it's more of it's very informal um you mentioned last podcast on the left our formats are very similar to theirs i noticed that i almost think they might have heard you guys and well we could do that and just kind of <laughs> yeah. 
had a you know, more uh, broader uh, circle of influence. So they got bigger a little faster. But you guys are just just not, if not, as, as more personal and as funny as these guys are. So, And I'm kind of glad they went true crime and you guys stuck with what you were doing. Me um, too, because they're so good at what they do. That they are. It, it would have just been like... And it's funny that you said that because I remember when they first started up, someone was sending me stuff saying, hey, someone's someone's ripping you guys off. And I'm like, well, they're not ripping us off. I'm like, it's just, it's kind of a common idea, you know, like if you're a fan of something and you're going to name your show after a horror movie, I mean, every horror podcast did that. So I, you know, and I, I don't know that, you know, if we were ever necessarily in their ears, I've talked to them since then. Um, you know, it's super great guy. Very, very nice guys over there. Their fandom is insane. You, so you've act, yeah, you did mention that before. So you've actually had contact and you, I guess you would say, you know, these guys in a, in a sort of way, um, I wouldn't that you've say, actually yeah. talked to people and they've helped got like do your live before cast, or at least Ma- Marcus did, who is kind of, I think the technical, uh, bit behind that show, Marcus, this is before they really blew up. I think Marcus is at the point now where he is had so much success and so many people try to contact him. I haven't heard from him in years. <laughs> so like it was, he's just a nice guy who, you know, I was able to reach out to him when the time came because we had a lot of people in common. Uh, I don't even know now at the point they're so successful. I don't even know if I could drop him a message and he would even read it <laughs> to be honest. I, you know, I, I used to think that too. And yeah. the way the way, way tech and the way things are now, um, you'd be surprised. And, and you're the kind of person that has a, a, a an impact on somebody. Just a, a five minute conversation, people will remember you, Freddie. So, I, I mean, if you were to ever reach back out, I guarantee you, he'd be like, oh man, yeah, how have you been doing? How's the podcast? I'm sure. I don't even think he has the think. time, honestly. I Probably think, not. Those guys are so busy. It's insane. But, like, they're like at a level of podcasts and uh and multimedia success that keeps them i think constantly working is what it seems like to me which is not necessarily something i would want for myself because i'm very much like uh i like to have my separate life you know what i mean yes. like and be able to have other pursuits um yes so, so where we're at is just about all i can handle well i mean it's really cool uh, i'm i'm not sure you know i don't want to get too personal uh, I'm, uh, is this your only project? You know, that kind of question. I don't want to ask about your home life. Or, you know, that oh, sure. That's, well, there's nothing I mean, weird there. <laughs> that's, 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 you know, that's poking a little too far in, I think. Uh, that's something we can discuss personally, you know, a backstage yeah. kind of thing. Um, you did, however, in the last podcast before we ended up having to shut it down, I remember you had mentioned something about you guys after you started the Patreon, you guys started receiving donations on a regular basis. Uh, and that opened up the door and helped pay for some travel expenses going to cons. Uh, why don't you tell me a little about some of them cons and some of the uh, the influence you've had there and some of the how how yeah. that helped expand the podcast? Like how that help it grow? I think the biggest one, and they're good friends now, is is Horrorhound Magazine. Nathan Hanneman, who runs Horrorhound Magazine, and Aaron Kroll, who's their uh, head editor. Uh, they and everyone that family uh, that runs that business they've been a huge support because they have given us access to a lot of people we wouldn't normally just be able to reach out to. We've had people over the years like Danny Trejo and Chris Sarandon and um, the cast of the Warriors, like all kinds of stuff. And that's never anything that we sought out. It was one of those things where we wanted to just talk about movies as fans of movies. We weren't a news or interview show, but we started doing news and interviews just for fun because why wouldn't you? You can't say no right, to right. an opportunity to, to interview some of these celebrities because you've seen them in 100 movies and it's like, I can ask them anything. I mean, the, the Trejo thing's mind blowing. Oh, he is a great, dude. he's a wonderful individual. And yeah. it's really cool that you guys had an opportunity. And, and I'm assuming you met through a con and, and showing up. Yeah. And yeah. Just, literally was like hey you want to come on the show and he was probably more than happy like we did it at yeah, the yeah absolutely we, we oh. would have we'd set up our show on the convention floor which was always just a phenomenal experience we've done it we've been at every whorehound weekend from the first one uh back in i don't know when 2007 <laughs> or whatever um 
we've set up a table we've been everything from having these huge computer towers and gear and everything down to now they have this i'm using what right now i'm using this thing called a roadcaster pro they have technology has shrunk everything down to where it's so much easier but back then we would have to haul out crates of gear and all this stuff and it was just yeah. a big ordeal but it was worth it because we'd get to sit down with all these all these people and sometimes it would be out of left field we weren't prepared they were just literally like, we're bringing so-and-so over to talk to you about their new movie or something. And we're just like, oh, God, I don't... panic, and sometimes, panic. Yeah, yeah, panic, right? And uh, so, and again, like I said, that's not really what we do, but I'm happy that we've had the opportunity to do it. But we've also done WonderCon and Comic-Con out in San Diego, although I didn't get to go to that one yet. Uh, we, we sent one of our other contributors out who had a little more flexible schedule um, to Comic-Con a couple of years. Um, got to be at... In Wonder at WonderCon out there when they announced the Child's Play remake and they had Aubrey Plaza in the cast there and Mark oh, Hamill, wow. uh, it was just like uh, that, that. Wow, just so many things like getting to see like I, I I mean I've been in I was in Strangers Pray at Night which is the sequel to the Strangers and that's because of the show and uh, because I became friends with one of the producers from that and he called me when I was camping I was like hey do you want to be in the sequel to the Strangers I'm like. It's like, yeah, I do. That's awesome. And we're just in the diner in the background. It's nothing, but it's like, I never That's would, so these cool. are things that we never would have done, you know, and it's all because of the networking at conventions <clears throat> and, and that, you know. So it's, it, so basically, uh, you and your wife sitting down to start a fun project has turned into a life changing experience for you that has opened up a lot of doors, it seems like. And yeah. well, I will use that analogy. Uh, to open a door and 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 talk a little bit about how this has given you, I would say probably gave you time. Uh, oh yeah, to focus on your music and get back into that. Um, yeah, and I've noticed on your channel that's where you're pretty much putting all your music and your projects with that. I'm not, and I know you're on Spotify. Uh, all these links will be in the description when you guys, if you guys are interested, and want to check that out. Uh, to my people, whether you're interested or not, check it out. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> so I guess let's get into that a little bit. Um, with the music. Yeah, full uh, circle. It, it's, it's extremely unique. And that's one thing I'll give you, especially with the covers you sent me. And I know you remastered them and I've got the remastered versions, which, wow, wow. They were kind of mind-blowing. And I've already got the placements. It's, it's going to be great. Oh, um, just so you guys know, uh, he, he voiced uh, Top Dollar. For the crow graphic novel that we're working on it has been a slow build slow process i've had to replace some readers and get their lines sent it's it's been a very very slow process but we it will be out next month so we are there uh, i've got a lot of bands and people that have contributed uh to this it's, it's, it's going to be a really cool project and i think it's going to open up doorways for everybody involved i hope so anyway um Tell me a little bit about where the music comes from and where you're at now with it, uh, because I've noticed that you, you with the, the music and the stuff you were into when we were in school together obviously was a lot different than where both of us are at now uh, as yeah. far as musicians go. Uh, what brought you here and, uh, and what made you decide to start a channel to put your videos and, and your uh, music on there? Well, um, I, honestly, it came from two places. Um, one is I experienced a lot of personal loss. I lost both my parents and some other family members during the COVID epidemic. Um, some, not even to COVID, but just during that period, it was just like I lost a lot of people. And um, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, thank you. I, but yeah, it what it did was, and I think this is true for so many people that ended up working from home during the pandemic and kind of reevaluating their lives. I was in that position and I was just like um, experiencing burnout and depression and a lot of anxiety about midlife crisis on top of it. You know what I mean? On top of all yeah. this other stuff, midlife crisis. Yeah. And I realized I was like, man, I've been working so hard at this day job for 25 years, same place, great job. But I was completely and totally incapable of, of doing it uh, with everything I had anymore. I didn't, my, my soul wasn't in it. And I was like, the last time I was really passionate about work was when I had the studio because I would work out there for hours on end and not eat and just forget about time just came to a stop whenever I was working on recording with artists and stuff. And uh, one day I was just like, 
I, I looked around the house. I'm like, I don't have any musical instruments here at all. I just gave them, I gave up on it because I'd never had time. So I went out and I bought a digital piano, like a Casio 88 key that felt like a real piano. And I was like trying to knock the rust off because the last time I touched a piano, I was just learning how to play it. And I, you know, and I'm like, it's time to get back into it. And I started um, a friend of mine who I met again through the podcast. His name is Brandon Boone. He's a composer who does music for a lot of video games, but also for a, a show called the No Sleep Podcast, which is all oh, short okay. horror fiction. You ever yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he does the music for No Sleep. He, he, um, okay. I think he reached out to me on Twitter in a DM once, which I'm so glad I read that because I don't normally read my DMs. But like, he, we started talking and it turned out he's local. So we ended up becoming friends. And then he had been doing volunteer work for the Cincinnati Association for the Blind and Visually Impaired because they do these radio dramas that they provide for free. Um, so as his career has grown, I'm kind of like stepped up and volunteered just to kind of hone my skills with them and compose scores. And, uh, and then also I was just writing scores mostly like, uh, and then I was like, you know, I kind of miss playing rock music. So I started writing, you know, rock songs, with, you know, lyrical stuff. And when you reached out to me about the crow, I was like, this just, I'm basically in that mode where I'm just like trying to get my, my sea legs again, you know? Yeah, and uh, the timing yeah. was great. I think on that, then that was, that couldn't have been better timing. It was um, perfect timing on the setup. I'm seeing on your, uh, your, your page or your YouTube channel here. Uh, is this your current acts that you're playing on? Is this a current yeah. setup? That's oh, my that is, I that love that guitar. Beautiful. <laughs> Absolutely yeah. beautiful. Um, That's awesome. And see back, back when, uh, so I know we weren't we weren't very uh, close in school. I, I we knew we knew each other. We had classes together, uh, but I do remember. And I'm sorry if this is going to embarrass you at all, but I do remember uh, coming to uh, the, the the when you guys put on the play for a few good men. Oh yeah, and I I remember you played Colonel, and I was so blown away. I've never sat there in a seat and been like so impressed. And I, I'm, I, like I said, I know we weren't close, close, but you were the only reason I went to that. I didn't know anybody else in drama, you know? So I went and sat there and watched that whole play and walked away like, man, if I wish I wasn't as young and I wish my brain wasn't where it was at when I was in school back then to where I could have reached out to you and, and we could have, you know, further pursued music and done things like that. Um, on your channel, as far as the music, is there anything you'd like to highlight? Uh, I actually see oh, yeah. one you've put up here that I haven't listened to yet. Would you Would you mind yes, brand uh, clicking new. on this and we can uh, check this out for everybody and let them see what you got? I oh, yeah, to, yeah. If that's okay with that's you? A, cool. uh, yeah, I'm not sure how it'll sound through, uh, through this, but you can go for it. That's a song I wrote for Amy because she was upset. Uh, this is around the time Elon Musk purchased Twitter. I started writing that. And uh, that one is kind of like, it, it's hard to, a friend of mine described it as like 80s Bowie. You know what I mean? Like it's kind of, oh. got, it's kind of electronic. A lot of, I, it's hard to describe like it, it, my music, I, I find like I do end up going to a lot of electric guitar and synthesizers and, and I program, I program beats because I can't fit a drum kit where I record. It's so small. The same. Uh, even then, I don't have a drum kit, you know, and living in our apartment or condos, it's not exactly like you can sit down and bust out a metal beat and then check it out, man. <laughs> um, so, you know, at an early age, I, you know, I got into bands and did the same thing. And I started learning that uh, when I was younger, I kind of got control issues. I don't play well with others. So I kind of just started doing the music myself. Uh, I'm kind of always been that control, you know, it's got to have a certain sound or I don't want to be part of it. So I discovered apps like Fruit FL Studio and Reason very early on at 19, 20 years old. We're going to go ahead and listen to R.I.P. from Freddie Morris, uh, his newest track. And uh, let's check it out, guys. Let's check it out. Masses. Couldn't care less 
Thank you so much. Oh, wow. Wow. Uh, I have to say, uh, you called it on that one. Uh, that was definitely had a heavy 80s, late 70s Bowie influence. And yeah, I, you influence guys probably aren't hearing it the way I'm hearing it in the headphones, but the sound is literally all over the place. That is very well done. Very Thank impressive. Thank you. Uh, that is great, man. Um, so this, what was this? This was uh, influenced by because I'm afraid we might have got a little cut at that point. Um, oh sure, yeah, that was um, when Elon Musk bought Twitter. Kind of the fallout. My <laughs> wife was, you know, like, do I stay? Do I go? And uh, and I, it was kind of like my friend. My friend Ke Kelly's also a musician. He's fantastic. Uh, he wrote a song for his wife, and Amy's like, you haven't written a song for me. <laughs> <laughs> so i wrote that for her because i was like oh i've got something i'm working on that actually i think will speak to something you're going through and that was what it was but uh, everything okay. you know i do try to like the thing uh with my music is it, it is all over the place like it's like it is rock mostly i would consider it like uh, post new wave rock or something i don't even know how to categorize it necessarily i don't but, either um yeah, it's hard. Like some, like the rival, of the Witch Queen is a score to a movie I made up. You know what I mean? Like, and same with Cowpokes trilogy, which is um, which is a, uh, oh, inspired so by um, that was inspired by like eighties fish out of water movies, like where some alien comes, like a Mac and Me. Uh, yeah, or, yeah, okay. <laughs> you know, it's like, That's but it's great. a story. It's actually got a story. There's a crawl with that video that tells the story of the Cowpokes yes. and why they left their planet and everything. So it's really just a. It's just a place to put all of those creative ideas when I, I had daydreaming all those years working in a cubicle, you know? Mm hmm And honestly, uh, I, musical score was something I've, uh, scoring film and shows or even video games has always been something I've wanted to do since I was a learned music. So I had to start doing the same thing. You know how that is. It's really hard to get into that field. It's even harder than going in a band, you know, starting a band and going and playing in a bar. It's harder to reach out to filmmakers. And believe it or not, nowadays, every filmmaker I've ever talked to, every special features I've ever watched, the music was always the last stage. They forget about it. They end up spending mm -hmm. so much money finding a composer and paying them to do this. You'd think new and fresh composers would get more opportunity like i'll do it for half of what the professionals charging you i'll do it for a third of what they want you know it's not it's still very difficult to get out there and a lot of people don't listen to music that doesn't have words and you know also the right. instrument 
So I started doing the same thing you did. I, I create these fake movie scenarios in my head. If I have to, I'll take notes and then write score to these scenes I see in my head and put, put that stuff together. And before you know it, I create an album out of that. And I'm like, well, you know, yeah, that's right. Being that's a movie, this is my stuff. Um, I, feel like I look at everything as a single and a project unto itself. I, f I was originally making a, f a, f a full score, which was a, a full uh, length album of instrumental music. And I got to the point where I'm just like, all of these ideas, I'm just going to release them as they kind of come together instead and just put the stuff out there. I'm not worried about making money off of it. It's more about just sharing it with people and, and it creates opportunities for other things like the arrival of the witch queen. I got to go perform. I'm not even, I'm not really a guitarist. Like uh, I can figure out my way around stuff and, and I can improvise. I'm, get, I'm getting better. I learned, I study a lot of music theory, but like um, I got invited to perform uh, murder ballads at a Cincinnati poetry reading. Uh, that, um, wow. The guy who ran the poetry reading, of, uh, we have a friend in common who's a poet who's awesome, by the way, Sarah Wagner. If, um, if you look up her stuff, her latest book, Hillbilly Madonna is outstanding stuff if you're into any kind of poetry at all um oh wow okay uh, siri's listening to me uh so uh <laughs> but i i got a chance you know hit the guy who organized that these po local poetry readings uh reached out because of the arrival of the witch queen which is so different like that's the thing he latched onto and that's his understanding of who I was as a musician and yet I'm there playing old traditional murder ballads on an acoustic guitar. And <laughs> really I'm like, I'm more at home sitting at a computer with my piano than I am anything, you know? Uh, but it's just fun. Cause like, I just want to, I'm, I'm back at that place. Like when you're a little kid and you're learning everything, you know, and that's, it's made me so happy. It's, it's really turned around a lot of the, um, the grim realities of like real life is like it's such a magical pursuit not to sound like totally frou-frou about it but it really is magic it's not frou-frou uh there me and a bunch of people watching right now i can guarantee quite a few of them are musicians so we understand exactly where you're coming from uh and most of us obviously wouldn't be in chats and be doing this if we were 100 percent successful musicians um, right. or at least professional i wouldn't say successful because you being able to put a song together and listen to it and be like i'm happy with this that's a successful musician i don't i don't care the way i see it from. too um yeah because so i'm doing it for myself it is really like because if i never think like i i do have people listen to my mixes because i just want to make sure there's nothing in there that is obviously wrong you know like that is objectively screwed up right but like really it's about when I hit a feeling and I know that I'm emotionally done with it and it's ready to kind of wrap that feeling up and that idea up and move on to the next thing, that's where I get with it. And then it's there. It is therapy. It's like a cliche, but it's so Absolutely. true. And I try to, I tell everybody, man, I play music. Cause like, it's even if he's, yeah, it, even if it's banging on like a drum or pots and pans or something like I think it's like one of the things that would help like our mental health crisis is if everybody picked up an instrument and just, or, or knitting or crocheting or something like that, you know? <laughs> yeah. Something that something requires it to, to release yeah. uh, something you can release. Yeah. Um, you're done with this and you look at it like I did that. Yeah. Um, where they always say pride's one of the seven deadlies when I'm like, well, there's two forms of pride here. There's proud of, where you won't accept any help from anybody. And, and it, that's the pride that brings you down. You know, you, somebody wants to donate money to you and you're like, I don't need that. I'm good. That's the pride that hurts. But being pride of a piece that you've done or being proud of a music uh, composition that you've completed, that is healthy pride. That is something that you can look back yeah. on and say, I completed this album. I can die happy. Um, yeah. There should be a I different guess. word for it. I, I agree, but I mean, it's the same, you know, and it's, I always try to explain to people like there's, yeah. there's, there's bad pride. And there's good pride. And your you, good pride is being proud of your kids, uh, your, your creations, your music, right. things like that. Um, yeah. and, and I can see, and I always try to tell people that yes, playing music is special to some of us who actually learned and, and have that gift because we have that release that a lot of people don't. And to, uh, I don't know, maybe you think the same way as a musician and an artist, we are almost obligated to entertain people, to share our music with people, uh, not to keep it, oh, I'm afraid nobody will like it. That's selfish. You need to put it out there because 
Yeah. We do create for yourself music for more ourselves. than anything else. Right. We do create yeah. music for ourselves and it is for us, but music even if is- nine out of 10 people hate it, the thing is there's that one out of 10 that, that is going to connect person. with you. Yeah. And it's like, and- that was it. That's it. That's all. That's, that's cool. You know, like we yeah. have that one connection and that's all that ever mattered to me was sharing yeah. it, getting out there and letting people enjoy it the way that I enjoy it or the way that you enjoy it. Um, I guess the next thing, because this is this, these seems to be setting themselves up, is uh, you had mentioned uh, the the school for the visually impaired, and you said you have done some work with that. I'd like to hear more about that because I'm I think that's great. I think that's really yeah. great that you give back. And well, it's honestly it's it, it is a selfish thing in that I need to have projects. I always have, even when I was working full time. Like I I my it drove. Amy crazy, my wife, Amy, she, she like, cause I always had stuff. She's like, why do you always have to have a project? Um, and now it's good because that's how I fill my days. I'm at the, you know, I'm at the piano eight hours a day. I just had rotator cuff wow. uh, surgery. So, I was going to say your cast off or your, your, yeah, your yeah, I'm out off. of my sling. So, but I am in, I had physical therapy for the first time this morning and, um, had it not, had I not been in that sling, I, Leading up to that, that's, I get up when she gets, you know, when she would start work and I would sit at the piano, I would start playing, I'd practice scales and all that stuff, but also write music and, and just kind of come up with ideas and I'd take breaks and watch movies and stuff and try to kind of steal ideas from that. And then, um, Same. absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, so I got to the point with, uh, having that obligation when Brandon said there's an opportunity at Cincinnati Academy for Blind and Visually Impaired. Rick Young is the guy who writes the stories, the ones that I've composed for, at least. He'll send me a screenplay, or not a screenplay, but a script, radio script, and um, and kind of give me an idea. You know, like just recently, he, the one I'm working on now for them, he's like, I need something in the style of Aerosmith. I need something country western, and I need a third thing, which I it was traditional English music. Oh, wow. <laughs> so like to me, that's, it's part of my education. So like, I, I'm actually very grateful that I had the opportunity to volunteer with them. Not, you know, not as a way of, I, I love that it is giving back. It's just a coincidence that it's giving back. It's more like Rick is the guy who's challenging me right now to, to, yeah. to get out of that, you know, to get out of the same poppy. And that's why I think a lot of the music that I've been working on is a little strange because I'll start working on something that's an, initially for another project and i'll find something strange in it that i'm like oh i really would love to put lyrics with that and then i end up with a you know a more of a singer songwriter piece whereas the focus i mean i've had everything from like i've been putting together like orchestras and everything and learning to to arrange for orchestras and write she music and all that so it's like major well it major computers make a huge difference because with midi you don't have to, you don't have to remember, you don't have to go and write things down anymore. So if anybody wanted to be a composer, it, where I left music is you, we were writing chord diagrams mm-hmm. on notebook paper where, where technology is now, I play it. And then when I'm done playing it, I can turn the MIDI into sheet music and just tweak it. If there's stuff that looks weird. And if I'm like, I have flutes playing this part, all I've got to do is go and reassign those MIDI channels to strings if I want, you know? So it's like, Okay. It ha- it has blown my mind. Like, I feel like I feel like Encino Man. You know, like I just came out of the <laughs> ice because technology is so much further along. Like, digital recording was in its infancy the last time I was using oh. one of the the original Cubase SX program on a wow. PC, which is yes. nothing. I remember yeah. Cubase. It was so basic, and and everything sounded MIDI. Everything yeah. sounded MIDI, and now you can, like I said, with FL Studio and Reason, I, I use them yeah. together, and and. I didn't realize that I could actually be translating what I'm doing to sheet music. I, I, yeah. That's how, but I can't read sheet music. So that's just me. Uh, I've never bothered well, to learn, you, which is terrible. The good news is you don't need to know how to read it. If, if you're giving it to other people to play, <laughs> as long as you played it the way you wanted it to sound, when they come, you know, when the, as long as the program is pretty well put together that you're using, like Logic is fantastic for it, but, um, which is on Mac, but that's what I mostly work in is Logic. And I okay. try to stay in Logic. Um, I have a setup where everything's always plugged in. I have my bass amp, my guitar amp. Everything is always ready to go so that I 
you know, if inspiration strikes, I literally step up from my couch, walk to my piano bench. It's all in the same room. And I just get to work on it. And I acoustically treated that entire area, you know, so that I can work there without it sounding like uh, I recorded it in my living room, hopefully. <laughs> no, it's not. I recorded this one in the bathroom. Bear with me, guys. Uh, <laughs> right. And I totally feel that. There's been so many times where I, I'm in the other room, I'm doing dishes, and this riff just hits me. Or yeah. you know, I'm like humming it, and I'm like, okay, on an electric guitar distorted, that would be mean. Run in here, plug everything in, turn it on, it's gone. I'm like, oh, I can't remember what I was. <laughs> yeah. You know? So having that setup, that's actually pretty smart, and I think you've inspired me to kind of rearrange my music setup to oh, actually have I'll everything where it's just a play. power. Or not even that. I uh, hook it all up to a um, the same surge protector. Where I turn that on, and then everything yeah. is just on and ready to go. Everything's on. That and is, yeah, MIDI you. is huge. MIDI is huge for music. Um, if you play piano, like MIDI, if I have an idea, the first place I usually go is the piano, but also um ideas come a friend of mine who i was in a band with years ago who you might know troy bausch um I remember troy bausch. yeah he had he gave me a um a mandolin when i he and i did a with a uh, mad frog do you remember the mad frog here in town uh yes I it closed it closed down unfortunately like we wait we wait their, how long ago good uh this it was this year well it was 2022 okay. and uh that's we played sad. their their farewell show. They had one last night there, and he and I went and played some old songs from our band. And oh. uh, when we were practicing for those that gig, he was like, "You want this mandolin?" <laughs> I'm like, "I don't know how to play it, but yeah, give me that yes. mandolin." And yes. honestly, half of the some of the stuff I don't even remember. I some of the tracks I have released have that mandolin on them because I I was like, I'll figure it out, you know. Like I, I spent so much time trying to figure out how to play the mandolin i wrote at least one of these songs on the mandolin and i ended up running it through my guitar amp distorted oh, and it wow. sounded just so cool like it's the experimental part like having the time to experiment where you used to be if i was working i'd have an hour or two to work on music tops maybe a week you know and now that's because i that's all i do i just i get up in the morning that's all i do i work on music i learn other people's music i write music and it's it's everything you know i i will say i'm happy i'm happy for you that you're in a position to where you can finally explore these a lot more and get into this uh that for, for somebody like you you've deserved it you earned it you put your time in thank you and yeah to me and even since i've known you from when we were 16 17 you were always a very kind and, and very generous person like you, you were you were never classified as a person who has any bad karma coming their way i mean we all human we all do our things but i feel like you deserve the opportunity that you have now to sit down and Thank create you. and have the time and i'm glad that you have it because we wouldn't be doing this right now if that weren't the case i wouldn't have found the youtube channel i wouldn't have tracked you back down again and been like dude i didn't know you were making music <laughs> and had a channel um and then it all just went from there and and to me i'm glad we wouldn't be having this opportunity to even sit down and talk if if you hadn't i guess created the situation that you're in now and and to be honest with you you did you you made it this way for yourself and so a lot um, of credit goes to to amy because it was amy's idea to start the podcast originally and also the support system i've got with andy hung who and kelly combrink who do the show with me like uh, this foursome has made it possible for me to do all these things. Amy in particular, who is the breadwinner now in this house, like she's like our bills wouldn't be getting paid if it wasn't for her busting her ass every day. She works in marketing and, and thank God that she's very good at her job and we get by, we have enough to eat and have a roof over our heads and do what we want to do. No, that that's, that's all that matters. If there's a roof yeah. over your head, the lights stay on and you're fed. To me, that's always ever, that's all that's mattered. The extra money comes and goes. It's it's a thing that will never be able to keep if you're a normal person. So once you accept that and just enjoy what you have and, and explore the creative opportunities that you have. And I did not mean to cancel out your team and your wife at all. I just oh, no, was no, like, no. I, I can completely understand having the support system it makes a huge difference if you had no one and it was just you who knows where it would end up yeah. you know that kind of thing and and yes thank you to amy as well for yeah for... gotta hold on to those friends andy just brought me dinner today he showed really? up to pay, he left something here and he showed up with leftovers i'm like oh that's dinner i don't have to i don't have to cook tonight so <laughs> that's fantastic he's a great um, guy 
So uh, let's get back just a few quick questions because I think we're getting close to a wrap up stage. Uh, and there's just some some things, some minor details I wanted to work out, uh, or at least let you talk about. Um, so your Night of Living podcast, what days should people be looking out for new? Every uh, Monday night we record. So okay, we do that, yeah. So is it recorded and we're hearing it as you're recording? Or when do you we, release for everybody? We release it immediately after we're finished recording. I don't do any post editing on it at all. It's, it's just what you hear is what happened in the room. It's an hour long. Uh, sometimes we go over, we try to stick to an hour. Um, okay. Five, 10 yeah. Minutes, you know. Yeah. Like a little bit here and there, but you know, give or take. And uh, every, every Monday night, most people I think listen on Tuesday mornings, we used to release on Sundays and then we switched to Mondays just for, so people could spend time, on the weekends with their family, you know, uh, yeah. pe the people involved with it. And, um, and then, uh, twice a month we do horror hound radio for the, for horror hound magazine, which I am recording, uh, today, Tuesday. So tomorrow. Okay. And, All right. and then that their schedule, their release schedule is very erratic, but, um, their content's good, a very different perspective, much more, um, much more scholarly, hardcore detailed, discussion of obscure gore films and japanese movies everything like those guys really know their stuff don't walk in there wanting to talk about serbian film when you've watched 15 <laughs> minutes of it right that kind of thing right. you're gonna you're gonna end up looking like an idiot like hey listen <laughs> we know exactly how much money that movie costs and you know what i mean like you're gonna start throwing all these beats out and you're like uh i saw 15 minutes of it and it, it freaked me I'm out the, you know i'm the guy who's like the more casual fan in that in that Pod, that podcast those guys really know the deep cuts where our podcast is much more casual like fan um you know just uh, it's the kind of conversations you have in the parking lot after you leave the movie theater okay, okay. it's more and more you know what, what i would describe ours you're absolutely right or or sitting uh, at a restaurant table together and everybody's had yeah. a couple beers and you, somebody brings up a movie and then next thing you know yeah. everybody's like oh that was badass and they start talking <laughs> about it that's it's it's like we're sitting there with you guys and you guys are so personable like it's i don't know how to explain it I, i'm hoping that a lot of my people watching and some of the people that just aren't even my people some of the people that catch a hold of this or watch some of this that it, it, click the links and give you an opportunity or give that podcast an opportunity to check out the channel because all it's really going to do is give them uh i would say an opportunity to listen to guys like you casual very cool people down to earth people you guys are also very funny. Your chemistry is, is Thank you. I crack up quite a lot, quite a lot. Um, to, to it's get, not for everybody. It's I not will for tell everybody. That. It's definitely but, not for everyone, but it is, it is very much what you hear is the conversations we would be having regardless, right. whether it was and a podcast or not. That's what I gathered from it. And, and to me, it feels like, I don't know, it feels homey and, or wholesome. Thank I don't you. know how to explain it. Wholeness, wholesome <laughs> is not the right word. Erase it is that. Kind, it is kind of like weirdly whole. It is we it's weirdly talk wholesome. about yes. disgusting things regularly. Like we do get into like sometimes some pretty, it's definitely adult only, I would say. Like that was a weird way of saying that. Adult only. I was very, that was like <laughs> English. I think I said that because we had an old disclaimer that was like, an English person or an Australian person saying "adult only," but like, uh, it is definitely not for kids. But it is a very warm, and we love each other. That we're like a family, yeah. and that that is part of it. I think why we've had listeners who have been with us for sixteen or it's be seventeen years in April, and like you uh, put a number it's on crazy. it. Crazy, yeah. Wow. It's crazy. It's really crazy. Wow. You but we're very bonded. I'd say so. I mean, even then, you guys have known each other since school. Yeah. Uh, so that it doesn't get deeper than that. You guys are family. So to me, yeah. I'm really happy for you guys. I'm happy for your success. I'm happy for your personal success. And I'm looking forward to digging more in and catching up on some of the newer stuff. Because the old stuff's there. It's there. I can go catch up on that anytime. I'd like to hear where you guys are at now. Because I think it was... I haven't been able to actually sit down and listen to one in probably eight, nine months. So I'm That's a lot of work. It's hard I'm to keep behind. up with podcasts. The only it way is. I kept up with podcasts is when I was working on cubicle all day because I had my ears were available, you know? So mm -hmm. like, I get it that like, I'm the same way now. My ears are not available. So I, I have not listened to a podcast in so long, 
But um, I will say that, um, damn it, my brain just went kaput on me. I was going to ah. say, oh, uh, we've been trying to make the show a little more accessible for new listeners by, because sometimes we are so comfortable with each other that we will jump into a conversation right after our opening. And I'm like, let's take it back for a minute in case somebody's new and try to kind of give them the warm handoff and explain what we really are before they you start. Forget but, to do the introductions, you know, like just yeah. kind of go into it. It's like, wait a minute, man, we could have 10 new people listening who have no idea who we are. And that's right. Kind of important. Have you guys considered uh, taking some of the old ones? I'd say go back. Well, I wouldn't say go back 17 years, but that's strictly up to you guys and starting a YouTube channel and slowly putting them up there. Uh, well, those are all available through our Patreon. What we do is something called Origins, which we take a turn each week based upon a rotation and we go back and scrub the episode. We listen to it and write a commentary uh, because of changing cultural norms and, and what is bad behavior on our part. We like to address old episodes. It. So we go and kind of really put ourselves, we try to put ourselves under a microscope with more responsibility about what we say now uh, because we started in the me a very mean era yeah. of the internet when Perez time. Hilton was king. It's yeah. Different time. I'm ashamed of some of those early episodes, but we release Aww. them for the patrons. Just, I'm ashamed of, you know, it's an, in, it's a sensitivity, like learning about yeah. other people. Like I have, that's the biggest takeaway for me from doing this for so long is in meeting people who are so dramatically different, their experience, like trans people and people who, refugees, like people who are, have yeah. these experiences in their life where you talk to them, like one guy I met through, the, he grew up during uh, the troubles in Northern Ireland. Like he's got PTSD, but now he works with, wow. with people trying to help them with PTSD. Like that's the sort of perspective I would never have had otherwise. Okay. You know what I mean? Cause just right. living, I've, I, I live in the same neighborhood I grew up in. So like, this is looking back on all these years. Like I, it was ed, an education for me socially in learning how to be uh, more considerate and kind to other people. As much as you say I'm, I'm kind and considerate, like there, there are some moments where we Listen, said some pretty ugly stuff in the early years. I'm a nice guy. <laughs> I'm a loving, my heart's bigger than my brain. I'm a loving, caring guy, <laughs> but I have made some jokes that would get me canceled in my <laughs> right, life. Right, right. So, yeah, you know, same. I think the way things have changed, it's, it's on a good roll. We're heading in a good direction, but you know how people are is we usually lean too far first before we find our balance yeah, so i think we're kind normal. of in that weird stage where everything is awful and no jokes anymore and comedians nobody's funny anymore we'll get there we'll get back to where we found a brown a balance where we can make jokes or be funny in a way to where yeah. it is funny and we're still touching that topic we want without tearing somebody down or finding a demographic and making them right. completely upset and i'm in i'm the same way i started broadcasting and, and making channels and stuff and doing old comics as audio comics so when i started doing that i really had to kind of cut some things out and be careful with what i'm doing comics from the 90s they don't really yeah. fly anymore so i got to kind of be careful about what i pick and choose and do i don't want to hurt anybody i don't want to make anybody upset with me at all um, so I can understand that. And then going back and scrubbing your guys' older stuff. Yeah, 17 years ago, we could make jokes that won't fly now. You can, we can say things that wouldn't fly now. And I respect that about you. At least you guys are keeping yourselves in check and you want to, you care. Yeah, well, we and that's my to point. You care. Be sensitive, you yeah, to the audience. Yeah, because yeah. we were like, it, it's that thing where you're with your friends, but there's a, a thing that clicks eventually, I think, when you do this long enough where you're like, there are people listening to this that aren't like the people in this room. So I like that. That's kind of where, I, where I got to, whereas I'm trying to, we, all four of us try to find that balance of, we're not comedians. We, but people always tend to, we are categorized often as a comedy show more so than a film show because of the way we interact with each other. But that is really just kind of naturally how we talk to each other anyway. But like I had to learn to not lean into that when, there's some, it's interesting to listen to these old shows because there's these moments where you can see, you can hear different people who have come and gone throughout the podcast, try to figure out what it is, you know, and now it, we know what it is. We know it's, it's very much like something that happens naturally now. And I just hope that we're doing it the best way we can. Well, I tell you what, it, 
something you just said kind of sparked a, a creative idea. I'm not sure it's a creative idea, but I would like to at some point in the future, if you if you could gather the other three and ha- and have all of you guys all at once on 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 one a future podcast episode. Oh, I forgot to tell you, uh, I joined a, a, a network. Uh, it's called Madness Comics Network, I think. I, I'll put the link in the description. You should check that out. Uh, cool. I got invited through a podcast. Uh, it's just long story short. We'll shorten it because I can make a long story longer if I if I had to. <laughs> long story short, uh, I joined a network of a lot of other creators on YouTube, and uh, I, I when I joined it, I was a little confused, but I didn't realize that it's it's Pops. The guy Pops runs the network. And he has all these YouTube creators run through his restream and stream all of their content through his network. And what I didn't realize is they're on Roku. They have a Roku channel. And I got invited into this network. So this will be the first, I think, if I'm not misunderstanding, this will be the first a dead, a talking dead guy that will be on the Roku. So oh, I'm cool. kind of excited that this was a great one. Uh, I'm really happy yeah. that you came on board. And in the future, I would love to have all four of you guys as guests. Uh, That'd be fun, even, yeah. Not even talk about you know horror movies. We could, but that's what you guys do. You understand what I'm saying? Uh, literally have everybody on and you talk about your experiences together and give us some highlights. Uh, maybe have one of you guys, whoever the tech techiest person is, take some clips. Because I don't want to play any of your podcasts. I want people to listen to it. I don't want to steal that. Uh, take some clips and some highlights that you guys would like to share and even make fun of yourselves. Um, it, I think that'd be a good idea. That just kind of sparked. Yeah. Like, why Why have you? I mean, I love having you on here, but let's have the team on if they'd be okay with that. Yeah, that'd be um, fun. It's a matter of getting it, them all nailed down where everybody's ex- at the same time. And you know what? It's, <laughs> that would make five schedules to be dealt with. I'm, yeah. I'm very flexible, and we could always find a time where we can record like we're doing now and then yeah. premiere later. And I, I think that'd be great. And I would like That'd to be give really these fun. other guys a chance and, and have the whole team. That way it's night of the living podcast. All yeah, together. that would be great. Yeah, I, I think, think that would be fun. Yeah. Uh, Throw it out there, see what they think about it. Uh, we'll we'll come up with a time for that. You know, we'll discuss that through the future. But Freddie, Sounds I want to tell you, man, it's been an absolute honor, and I'm so oh, happy this you. went. That the audio went great, everything went great. Uh, I would love to have you back. I'd love to have the other guys with you. Uh, yeah, at any time, you. let me know. Um, is there anything that coming up? Is there anything in the the near future for you that you'd like to share with people? Uh, well, I've got songs in the pipeline. One will probably be released. By the end of February, I'm thinking I'll probably have another release there. So stay tuned there. But uh, every every week there's a new Night of the Living podcast. Every week there's a new Origins episode on Patreon, a new Topicana on Patreon. Uh, and we are going to be at Whorehound Weekend uh, here in the last weekend in March, I believe, at the Sharonville Convention Center. Okay. So, oh, okay. Do you have a date? Yeah, I think it's March. I can find out exactly the date for you. Because, man, I'm, I think I'm going to be in Lexington Comic Con the 24th, I want to say, uh, lining up an interview. And, and I've got a, a, a creator, a comic book, indie comic book creator who's got her own booth. And she's Mar- been on the podcast. March 22nd through the 24th. It's at the Sharonville Convention Center. And I there are still there. tickets. So. Ooh. Yeah, I'll be it's there. It's fun. I will the be film, there. Have you ever been to one before? Uh, I've been, actually, me and one of my uh, ex fiancés we were huge into horror stuff. We went to one, and I'm telling you, it was one of the best times, one of the coolest people, homiest. Everybody welcomes everybody. I believe yeah. the one I went to, the special effects artist from the Evil Dead films were there. Mm-hmm. He had the Necronomicon. Yeah. He had everything there. I got to meet Sid Haig. Um, yeah, Sid Haig's great. Or was the late, great. The late, great Sid Haig. Uh, yeah. He was such a fantastic man. He was so yeah. nice. He was charging for photos and all this. And I got, I kind of had a weird inspiration where there was a, a, du- a dude doing live drawings. He would do live watercolor drawings and stuff. So I had him do Captain Spaulding for me. And I took it over to him and he signed it and took a picture with me for free and even went, ay, 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 ay. I was like, you are a beautiful <laughs> man. Uh, it was, I, I'll tell people all day, horror cons are some of the coolest people you will ever be around. Uh, no one's judging anybody. It's just fantastic. So I'll really be there. Good time. I promise Great. I'll be there. Yeah. I'm going to come see you guys and, and, and catch up and, and get back into cons. That's one thing I need to be doing. And, yeah, man. Get a drink okay. or something. 
Yeah, that's <laughs> great. That's actually really good news. Okay, cool. Uh, so you've got that. You've got it coming up. Anybody in the local area? I actually have a few followers and subscribers that I didn't know through school, just randomly through knowing them for months through chats through other networks that they live in Cincinnati, they live in Northern Kentucky. And one of them is actually a horror movie producer. So oh, I'm cool. going to try to gather all these guys and see if we can't make an appearance and, and, and kind of. You should. Guys. It's a great time, man. It's a great time. That's fantastic. Freddie. I appreciate you, brother, and I hope that hey, I hope you. that you can see some of your subscriber count, and I hope you can get some more listeners on your podcast. Uh, at I appreciate least. it. Uh, I guess for everybody tonight watching, I appreciate you guys coming out. Thank you for watching, and uh, you guys have a good night. All right, guys. Thank you for everybody uh, in the chat. Thank you, Dead Guy, for letting me sit here in his chair and take care of all of his business. And uh, we're going to go ahead and sign off for the evening. But I really appreciate everybody coming out. Don't forget to smash that like button on your way out the door. Uh, leave me some comments, share, and uh, everybody take it easy for the rest of the evening.